me once again in your blood. Fill me once again with the spirit of you. Once again, let those rivers of living water flow into me so that they can flow out, so that someone can see me as a mirror image of you, so that someone can look at me and look at my life and feel something and see something that is different. And, and it will strike a chord in their heart and they'll want to see what is, what is that that they feel. Because every soul of every person has an innate yearning to be in touch with God Almighty. Right. I have told you tonight strictly from the Bible what the plan of baptism was. It wasn't something that they were confused about in the book of Acts. It wasn't something that later on as I read to you that they were confused about. It did not come along until the 4th century, the Trinity, of being baptized in the name in the titles Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That came about in the 4th century, in the year 325 at the Nicene Council with the Roman Catholic Church. It wasn't something that they were confused about. But as the devil tried to create a counter to the church of God that had begun to grow and begun to take place and to take shape and to take effect in those early years after Jesus had died. He came up with a plan to pervert that plan of salvation. Because if he can distract you a little bit here, he can keep you from going all the way over here. Okay. So what he did was he twisted it just a little bit. He twisted it not enough so that people would go, oh, that there's something wrong with that. <coughs> but he twisted it just a little bit so that it wasn't any longer valid. It was no longer a signed contract. It was no longer a blood covenant. It was invalid. There will be some of you under the sound of my voice that have been raised all of your life with the dogma of the Trinity doctrine. And perhaps you've never even heard of the oneness of God Almighty and the baptism in Jesus' name. But up until now, it hasn't stopped you from living in a world that keeps you searching and yearning for something that your soul is missing. I'm not asking you to do great things. I'm not asking you to build great buildings to change history. I'm not asking you to do any of that, to send in any money. I'm not asking for anything other than for you just to try Jesus. You have nothing to lose. You have absolutely nothing to lose. If you're curious, please go to our website, rivieraapostolicchurch.org. And begin to research for yourself and look for yourself. Because the Bible says that if you're sincere, God will lead and guide you into all truth. Contact us. Even if you don't live anywhere near where we are at, contact us. And we will connect you with a minister and with a church that will help you and will, will instruct you and lead you and guide you. May God bless you. It's been my privilege to give you this Bible study. And we are praying and hoping that you will be enlightened and blessed until we meet again. God bless you.